Hello, this is Lopsa with the Yolanda Yowangi Experience Tibet. Uh, we are asking, oh, we are answering your question about Tibet travel. Uh, some of our travelers asking how, how to stay healthy while you're traveling in Tibet. So what is, the, what is your question? You know, you have been so many times in Tibet, you sort of uh, know how to be healthy. I think so. I've been quite healthy. I've been less healthy and more healthy in Tibet, and the less healthy times were when I didn't pay attention to acclimatization um, problems or issues. So the biggest, uh, I think the single biggest thing that you need to do to stay healthy is to follow altitude sickness prevention uh, outlines. And we, I mean, that's, we're just doing a very short video here. So basically you need to uh, ascend slowly and, um, you know, sleep at the different altitudes as you go up. So we have a lot of information about that on our site and we can give you a checklist and everything. Uh, and we'll put a link for that in this video, uh, below this video. So besides that, the things that you need to do to stay healthy are the same things that you would do anywhere uh, as, when, you, when you're doing international travel. So, you know, don't drink the water unless it's been purified. Um, Generally, you can drink bottled water, but you know if you want to like uh, boil it to to further make sure that it's okay. But I haven't had any trouble with with bottled water. Um, the other rules are you know the all the same the same rules that you would follow anywhere. Like you know what is it? It's boil it, peel it, or forget about it. So if the food is not cooked, you you want to peel it. Like fruits or veggies, you need to peel them um, before you eat them. Right. right? Also, yeah. Also, I think. Uh, I, I would highly recommend do not eat salad or the stuff, mm. so cold food, yeah. you know. Yeah. And also <laughs> kind of leftover food you yeah. shouldn't eat. And also when you get there, you must rest. It's critical, uh, you know, don't dehydrate and also, uh, um, you know, rest, 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 rest. That's my first lesson. <laughs> Yeah, when you first get there. So Lopsang himself, after being uh, out of Tibet for many years, when, when he went back, he really did yeah. not feel good. Yeah, right? you know, yeah, yeah. If I didn't, you know, if I don't rest enough when I first got there, I got a really hard time. If I rest when I first got there, then you know, I'm totally fine with it. So that's my one of the experience. And this is somebody who's genetically inclined for high altitude. So you want to, if you, you know, if you're not, if you're, if you're a Westerner, um, you want to make sure that you follow the acclimatization rules. So I'll just in a nutshell, I would say we recommend asking your doctor for acetazolamide to take the the Dymox, uh, also which is a high altitude uh, prevention, altitude sickness prevention medicine. Um, we also recommend taking the. Uh, the slow route in, so going in from mainland China, starting in Xining, staying two nights there, taking the train, and then resting um, for at least a couple of days when you get to Lhasa. Do not like go start hiking and trekking and climbing the steps of the Potala the first day. Um, and then all those, and then those kind of general travelers' guidelines about uh, drinking bottled water. Also, don't brush your teeth. Uh, with the the local Tumblr, water, yeah. even if you're out, you know, you know, if, if you're out trekking in Tibet and there's some beautiful mountain stream, it's very likely that yaks or other animals have been higher <laughs> than you are. So it's also it's not, you know it's a good idea you want to purify that water. So and then of course you can eat in restaurants and you know there's many many place, great places that you can eat and even in the small towns it's no problem. Just make sure that the food comes to you hot. Um, cooked. Cooked and hot, and you don't want to, uh, like Lopsang said, you really want to avoid salads, uh, cold, and food, you know, yeah. any kind of yeah. cool, cold, uncooked food. Also, you know, you don't want to eat like frozen, you know, raw meat, or those kinds of stuff. Depends, uh, <laughs> if you were thinking about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you know, you <laughs> want to try exotic Tibetan food, um, I don't think you should eat if you want to be a holiday. So that's, yeah. that's what we think. That's our plan. You know, we've done, uh, 
we were we've been unhealthy not following some of those rules and very healthy following some of those rules. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing that's really good. It's like the the dry climate um, really can do a number on your sinuses. So anything you can do to um, you know, Tibetans in the in the winter or any cold times often wear those face masks, um, which is really good just to keep it keeps your kind of nasal uh, passages moist, moist. and um, it, it helps a lot. And also dry and uh, kind of you know dusty. That's why Tibetans wear that um, protection. Yeah. 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 It, that that'll help keep your sin like a lot of uh, sinus problems mm -hmm. in Tibet. Maybe right? the dust. I think. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so I think that's it. We'll post uh, we'll post a link for any other information that we have that might help you um, below. And if you have a question, go to our uh, All Things Tibet Facebook group, and you can ask us there, or you can send us a question uh, through our website on the contact contact us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.